This is task 1b part 1 where you are asked to import each of the five tables and show evidence of the data types. So first of all, this is what you're looking to achieve. You're looking to be able to show each of the tables in design view with the field names and the data types showing. That's the four of the tables and if I was to scroll down a little bit you'll see the fifth table there. How are we going to achieve that? Well first of all you need to start by looking at the data and seeing what the data is. So we're going to look at the church table, we're going to look at how we go about importing that. So here's our church table and you can see the church ID, that's going to be its primary key and then all the different contact information about that church. Now that's shown in a CSV file which nicely shows up in Excel in its correct format with columns. But if we actually have a look at it as a notepad file, this is how it's stored. It's a comma separated file, CS, comma separated. So each field name is separated by a comma. And each item of data for each field is also separated by a comma. So when the database reads this data, we need to tell it that it's a comma separated file so that it knows that these commas mean that there is a break between each field. Before we can do that, we need to create a blank database. Now, when you open up Microsoft Access, this is the sort of thing that you will get. So if we click on blank desktop database now, it will give us the opportunity to save our database. Now, we're going to think about something that's going to be appropriate. OK, so I'm going to call it Sutton Park um, Camping. As long as it's appropriate, it doesn't matter what you call it. You've then got to decide where you're going to save it. So if you click on this folder here, you can then choose a folder to save it in. It's really important that we get that file name straight away because otherwise you end up with lots of database files that don't mean much. When we create it, it will go straight into a table. We don't want that because we're going to import the data. So I'll right hand click and close and that will get rid of it. So we're going to import data, that means we're going to get it external data. And here's our option to import and link. Well, we're going to be importing a text file. I know you're probably thinking, well, isn't it an Excel file? No, it's not. It's not an XLS file. It's a text file as a comma separated file. It just so happens that I was viewing it in Excel. So I'll click on text file and we now get to browse okay, to find where that file is. Once you've browsed to the similar but different folder, you need this folder here called Data Files. And we're going to be importing the church table, so we'll open church. We're going to import it into a new table in the current database. We're not going to link to an existing table. When I click on OK, it will import the data. And we want to leave it as delimited, right? because it's separated by commas. Now, if we make it, well, it's got it already for us, comma, but we can just double check and make sure it does do the comma for us. And you'll see there that it's pulling in each of the fields correctly. I'm not going to set up any of the data types at this stage, but what we do need to do is say that our first row contains field names. If we don't, we have to start all over again for that table. Now you can see it's got the field names. So we'll ignore the data types bit because we'll actually do that within access tables it's much easier to do it that way. Now it's saying that it's going to add its own primary key we don't need that because we've already got a primary key of church ID so I'm going to choose my primary key and it's actually suggested church ID anyway. It's now saying what do we want to call the table we're going to call the table church and we'll click on finish. What we should now see when we click on close is if we open the table, we'll now see that list of churches. It matches the list that was in our data file. And we can also look at this list of churches in design view, as well as the view at the moment we're in, which is data sheet view. So if I just go home now and have a look at the design view, we can see here that we've got different data types for each of our fields. We've got the church ID has been set as a number, well that is appropriate. 
The church name has been set as short text, as have most of the other things, and the website is a hyperlink. Now, at the moment, they'll all be set to 255. We don't want them to be that long. So if you have a look in the similar but different task instructions, you'll see that it's more sensible to choose shorter lengths like these. Now, I'm not going to do them all for you now. You can just follow the set as they are. Once you've set all of your data types and you've changed all the text lengths, as you can see I have here, you can then go and view the data. Now, when you says save the table, you get quite an alarming message that comes up next, suggesting that some data might be lost. Well, actually, all that we're losing are all the spaces that it's put in that we don't actually need. So where a contact full name was 20, if that name is actually only eight characters long and it's got 12 spare spaces, when it was 255, it had 247 spare spaces. So it's just losing some of those spare spaces that we didn't actually need. So if I click on yes, we can actually see that all the data is still there. It's just that it's not taking up as much space as it was before. Now, if you just double click in between each of these field titles, it will lay it all out for you so that you can see all the data in one go. And then I can save the table again. In the next tutorial, we're just going to import one more table and just have a look at some of the other data types that we might use.